go outside and observe all the plants around you do you see that some plants are small some very big while some are just patches of green on the soil some have green leaves while some others have reddish ones some have huge red flowers some have tiny blue ones while some have none we do see a variety of plants existing all around us near our homes in the school ground on the way to the school in the parks and gardens isn't it hi today let us go through a very interesting chapter getting to know plants in this video let us get to know the different parts of any plant this will help us understand the differences between plants of different kinds can you label the stem here how about branch root leaf flower and fruit of the plant let's start with our first topic now which is you can pause and take note of the uh, or the screenshot of this the complete label diagram of the parts of a plant before we start with the very first topic which is herbs shrubs and trees let's first discuss herbs plants with green and tender stems what is it green and tender stems are called herbs they are usually short and may not have many branches some plants develop branches near the base of the stem where do they develop branches near the base of the stem the stem is hard but not very thick such plants are called shrubs on the other hand some plants are very tall and have hard and thick stem the stems have branches in the upper part much above the ground such plants are called trees you're right now do an activity whenever you go out and see some plants look closely at the stem and branches of plants much smaller than you then plants that are about your size and plants which are much taller than you feel their stem and try to bend them gently so to see if they are tender or hard take care that the stem does not break hug the tall plants to see how thick their stems are we also need to notice from where the branches grow in some plants close to the ground or higher up on the stem now group all the plants you observed into three categories herbs shrubs and trees you may also use weeds with soft stems for the activities do you know what weeds are in crop fields lawns or in pots often some unwanted plants or weeds start growing have you seen farmers removing these weeds from their fields let me know in the comments below now do you ever wonder what kind of stem the money plant has or bean stalk gourd gourd plants and grape vines have do observe some of these plants how are these different from a herb a shrub or a tree why do you think some of them need support to climb upwards plants with weak stems that cannot stand upright but spread on the ground they are called creepers while those that take support and climb up are called climbers these are different from the herbs shrubs and trees isn't this chapter interesting so don't forget to give it a thumbs up moving on to our next topic stem 
If you observe closely the stems of different plants around you, you would see that stems bear leaves, branches, buds, flowers and fruits. All good? Well, it's time for one more activity now. You are going to love this one. Get a glass, water, red or blue ink and a soft stem. Pour water to fill one third of the glass. Add a few drops of red or blue ink to the water. I am using red here. Cut the base of the stem and put it in the glass as shown here. Observe the setup. Does the color appear in the stem? You will find that the color rises in the stem. If you take a stem with leaves and keep it for a long period, the color appears in the veins of leaves also. How do you think the color reached there? From this activity, we see that the stem helps in the upward movement of water. Interesting, right? The water and minerals go to leaves and other parts of the plant attached to the stem. This is an enlarged view of an open end of the stem. Let's see how does it look under the microscope. Here we go. Interesting? Enjoying the chapter? Great. Let's go to our next topic. Leaf. Have you ever observed the leaves of some plants around you? Are all the leaves of the same size, shape and color? No, right? How are leaves attached to the stem? The part of leaf by which it is attached to the stem is called petiole. The broad green part of the leaf is called lamina. Try and identify these parts of leaves and plants around you, petiole and lamina. Do all leaves have petioles? Let us get to know the leaf better by taking its impression, which means it's time for our next activity. Put a leaf under a white sheet of paper. Hold your pencil tip sideways and rub it on the portion of the paper having the leaf below it. Did you get an impression with some lines in it? Are they similar to those on the leaf? These lines on the leaf are called veins. Do you see a prominent line in the middle of the leaf? This is called midrib. The design made by veins in a leaf is called leaf venation. If this design is net-like on both sides of the midrib, the venation is reticulate. What is it? It's called reticulate venation, as seen in the image here. On the other hand, in the leaves of grass, you might have seen that the veins are parallel to one another. This is parallel venation. Observe the venation in as many leaves as you can without removing them from the plant. Draw the pattern and write names of some plants having reticulate and parallel venation. Shall we now find out some of the functions of a leaf? For that, let's perform one more activity. For our next activity, we will require a herb, two transparent polythene bags, and thread. Do this activity during daytime on a sunny day. Use a healthy, well-watered plant that has been growing in the sun. Enclose a leaf branch of the plant in a polythene cover and tie up its mouth as shown here. Tie up the mouth of another empty polythene cover and keep it also in the sun. After a few hours, observe the inner surface of the covers. What do you see? Are there any droplets of water? How do you think they got there? 
Now don't forget to remove the polythene bag after the activity. Water comes out of leaves in the form of vapor by a process called transpiration. Plants release a lot of water into the air through this process. Now the question is why did we tie a cover around the leaves? Would we have seen the water evaporate if we had not tied a polythene cover? What makes the water appear on the polythene bag? In chapter 5, you must have noticed water changing into different forms in some of the activities. Can you think of these and name the process that makes water drops appear on the polythene cover? Comment below and let us know. Leaves also have another function. Let us study this with the help of another activity. We would require a leaf, burner, a beaker, test tube, spirit, water, a watch glass and iodine solution for this activity. Now. Take a leaf in a test tube and pour spirit to completely immerse the leaf. Now, place the test tube in a beaker half filled with water. Heat the beaker till all the green color from the leaf comes out into the spirit in the test tube. Take out the leaf carefully and then wash it in water. Place it on a watch glass and pour some iodine solution over it. What do you observe? You would notice that the leaf turns bluish black. Does this mean that the leaf has starch in it? In chapter 1, you must have seen that a slice of raw potato also shows the presence of starch. Potatoes get the starch from their leaves and store it. Leaves prepare their food in the presence of sunlight and a green colored substance present in them. For this, they also use water and carbon dioxide. This process is called photosynthesis. Oxygen is given out in this process. The food prepared by leaves ultimately gets stored in different parts of the plant. We have seen that the stem supplies leaf with water. The leaf uses the water to make food. The leaves also lose water through tra transpiration. How do the stem and leaves get water? That is where the roots come in, which is also our next topic. Roots help in holding a plant firmly to the ground. That means they anchor the plant to the soil. Now tell me something. Are all the roots alike? Well, no, they are not. We would talk about two types of roots. For roots of the kind shown here, the main root is called tap root. And the smaller roots are called lateral roots. Plants with roots as shown here do not have a main root. All roots seem similar and these are called fibrous roots. If I say that a leaf venation and type of roots in a plant are related in a very interesting way, would you believe me? Try to match the type of leaf venation and the type of roots for some plants and see. Now, we have learned that roots absorb water and minerals from the soil and the stem conducts these to leaves and other parts of the plant, right? The leaves prepare food. This food travels through the stem and is stored in different parts of the plant. We eat some of these as roots like carrot, radish, sweet potato, turnip and tapioca. We also eat many other parts of a plant where food is stored, right? Now tell me something. Do you agree that stem is like a street with two-way traffic? 
comment below and write the name of material that goes up in the stem and that which comes down now we will study about structure of a flower out of the given pictures of rose plant which one do you think will help you best to recognize the plant are all the flowers colorful have you ever seen flowers on grass wheat maize mango or guava are these brightly colored let us study a few flowers when choosing flowers to study avoid using marigold chrysanthemum or sunflower you will learn in higher classes that they are not single flowers but groups of flowers now let's do an activity we would require one bud and two fresh flowers each of any of the following datura china rose mustard brinjal lady's finger or gulmohar also a blade a glass slide or a sheet of paper a magnifying glass and water observe these pics carefully look at the prominent parts of the open flower these are petals different flowers have different petals of different colors where do you think the petals are in a closed bud which is the most prominent part in a bud did you see that this part is made of small leaf like structures they are called sepals take a flower and observe its petals and sepals now answer the following questions how many sepals does it have are they joined together or are the colors of the petals and the sepals how many petals does the flower have are they joined to one another or are they separate do the flowers with joined sepals have petals that are separate or they also join together confused check out the same for a different flower too to see the inner parts of the flower clearly you have to cut it open if its petals are joined for example in datura and other bell shaped flowers the petals have to be cut lengthwise and spread out so that the inner parts can be seen clearly now remove the sepals and petals so to see other parts now study the parts of the flower shown here carefully and compare your flower with it and identify the stamen and carpel in your flower the innermost part of the flower is called the pistil please note that the pistil of a flower generally consists of several carpels there are three parts of a pistil stigma style and ovary stigma style and ovary ovary is the lowermost and the swollen part of the pistil this is the ovary of a cucumber if we cut it longitudinally it will look like this however if we make a transverse cut it would look like this small bead like structures inside the ovary are called ovules now these are different kinds of stamens present in different flowers there are two parts of the stamen in a flower anther and stigma anther and sorry filament observe some different flowers and see if all flowers have sepals petals stamens and pistils are there flowers that do not have any or more of these are there flowers which have parts other than these did you find any flower which has no difference between sepals and petals did you find any flower in which the number of stamens is different from the number of petals do you now agree that the structure of the flower is not always the same the number of petals sepals stamens pistils may also be different in different flowers some of these parts may even be absent at times that's it hope you enjoyed the chapter
डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज स्टडिंग कैन नॉट गेट मोर फन देन दिस चल टिल वी मीट नेक्स्ट बी काइंड मेक हेल्थियर चॉइसिस एंड स्टडी वेल दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो हैव अ नाइस डे बाय